Okay, so welcome to Sports Matters TV. We're in Mahan Community Centre uh, in lovely Mahan. I'm joined by a true legend. Um, the man, he can do anything. Like, he can literally do anything. Uh, John Andrews, how's things with you, sir? Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. It's a, it's a, it's a smash to be here. I'm a, a man boy myself, so being yeah, home is proud. 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 And they were happy to have us here today, which is great. They were great. great Smashing the group, you know, they've, they've the group up, the Rainbow Club with the children with autism above, and the place is booming since. Uh, since Dennis and, and the new staff came in, it's, it's terrific. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, they've looked after us since we came in, so we're going to make sure all the links are on uh, the Facebook page as well. Yeah. Uh, so we have to talk about, first of all, like you, you do so much. You're uh, a good football player, a good coach, um, a good dancer, a good yeah. guitar player. You, you can do everything, but we, we go back to, I know you most of all for your, your football. Yeah. Um, how did you get started on football? Tell us about the, the underage days, the young um, days. The young days were at man and. I remember having the were a team at the time, you know, they had yeah. some terrific lads like Mark Reardon who went, who went over to for trials in Aston Villa. And, but we had some good ones as well, like Wayne Sherlock and you know these kind of lads. And um, what would happen was I was playing for the 12s and the 13s. Uh, we were in the first division, and my father kept saying, "Look, he said this is your team, it's your local place. You feel better." And, and my father was a massive influence on me. And um, he just told me he'd help me to get to England, he'd help me get an international cap. Yeah. When he said a cap, I didn't have a clue what he was talking about. But, um, and he, I wouldn't say, you know what, I wouldn't say he pushed me, but he just put challenges in front of me that if I didn't, if I didn't kind of accept them, I didn't feel great. Yeah. So he always put that kind of, that was the way he, without pushing up, that was the way he kind of, he had the competitive edge put into me. And, um, and then that's how it, it all spiraled, a guy called Morris Fleming saw me when I was about 13. Yeah. And uh, he said, right, that kid is for us. And lo and behold, I ended up going to Coventry, I think it was in June of 95, I think. Yeah. And what, what was it like? First of all, like, was there, um, you know, when you knew you were making that move, what was the buzz like? Say it's a dream come true. Um, to be honest with you, uh, it, it wasn't because I, uh, I love reading and I love learning, I love being, I love being in school. I wasn't one of these footballers that hated being in school. So I had my fifth year exams coming up in, in April or May of 2000 or in 1995. So I was more or less concentrated on that. I always thought at the time, because of the fact that it was signed and the deal was done, yeah. that that was, that was the next step. You know, I liked to always focus kind of on the now. So I was focused on my exams, I was focused on honoring man and, and stuff like that. And uh, it was just, get, when you get over it, then you kind of go, oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And they're a fantastic club, like, what was mm. it like to, to get over there and what was the difference? I know it's, it's a different game. It's, you know what, and Jerry, it's, it's, it's funny you say it, everyone now knows what a rondo is, you know, with the, the five or six players around in the two in the middle. Yeah. And my first rondo over there, we were playing a staff game against the under 19s. So Strachan and Ron Atkinson brought in these, um, they brought in a couple of the first team lads. And the first team lads were Gary McAllister and David Burrows and Dion Dublin. And we were sitting in the middle and it was me and another one of the young fellas that were there, an English lad, and uh, we just couldn't get out. It was literally, we just, and they were telling us, you're not getting out, yeah. and we didn't. So it was, it's just, they, they didn't give the ball away, their technique was perfect, and mine wasn't. Yeah. You know, I was a big strong lad, I was fast, you know, I could hit a ball with the ins and outs of football, the little intricacies of passing the ball and that kind of stuff, I didn't have a clue, so that's, I, I had to almost go back to basics. Jesus, and like, would you ever get starstruck? You mentioned McAllister, Dion, like, the lads are legends. Like, we still remember them to this day. Like, starstruck all the way. Um, yeah, I thought it was healthy as well. I, 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 I kind of looked at some of the young players that would just fit into the first team, and, and they, I always think that you have to respect the people that are above you, so that you have something to chase. Yeah. And uh, I, I give the boys the respect. I mean, I was never really in awe, kind of, you know. Um, because my, my job as a YTS player, I know it's gone now, but the YTS player was to make Ron Atkinson's tea. So I'd go up in the morning and sit down with Ron and have a cup of tea in the morning and, and yeah. just chat about everything while the other lads are on screen, scrubbing boots and stuff. And, um, but I always thought it was a healthy kind of admiration for the players because I could see the level that they were at yeah. and I wanted to get there. Yeah. You know, and uh, it just gave me something to, kind of, to, to push for. Challenge. And, like, you know, they say like you know when you go over at such a young age like you know to get the, the unknown experience it's essential. You went to Mansfield for a while. Yeah. Um, how, how do you find that? Like obviously there's a lot of chat. Like you see, you hear the stories. Yeah. Very <laughs> physical. Chunks out of your legs. Yeah. And you get that one fella that has a left leg like a hatchet. But yeah. what was it like? That was <laughs> <laughs> um, Mansfield was a. Uh, it was different. You see, I, I went. People forget. They think I went to Mansfield as a senior pro. I went yeah. to Mansfield at 19 years of age. Yeah. yeah. And I was pushed straight into the first team by um, the manager at the time, Billy Dearden. And um, 
and Bill was a legend at Mansfield and, and Sheffield United. So they pushed me into the first team. I remember making my debut against Lincoln. We, we, I think we won 5 2. And all I could do was just keep kicking the ball off the field. And I was, after three and a half years at Coventry, I was saying to myself, surely my technique is good enough now with, you know, with networks and stuff. Yeah. But I ended up playing two and a half seasons, nearly three seasons at Mansfield. And, uh, yeah. League football, I, I don't care what, you're, uh, what people think. When they, you see the youth academies now in England, they stack players up and you know, they'll, they'll buy you and they'll buy you and they'll buy you and they'll buy me. Yeah. And they'll stack the sort of clubs going to have you. I think the most invaluable experience you can get is being in league football. Where your job, where it's 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 your ninety five, your win bonuses, your your appearance money, yeah. that determines what kind of a life you have. Now these kids are on a fortune now, but we have to win a game or play in a game yeah. to make decent money. Therefore, you know you work your ass off, of course, in, on Monday to Friday, so you're in the team on Saturday. Yeah. You know I think that I think that might be a little. I'm not too sure why I've had too much academy experience over the last four or five years with England, six years in England. But I think that might be what's missing at the moment, you know. Definitely. Um, like, you came home then, I remember when you came home at the city. I remember being out there already, um, and I had to get your autograph again and all that. But <laughs> I remember you were on the echo, there was a lot of coverage when you came yeah. home. It was a big move uh, to come back to city because that was kind of like when city really kicked on again. Yeah. Um, did you find it hard to come home, first of all, or was it just, you know, one of them things where you were excited about coming home and playing the city? Um, I came home actually to just to take a break from football. Yeah. Either it was before the Cork City thing came up. I'd always made a promise to my mother that had I stopped in professional football, I'd about seven eight years in England. Yeah. I'd always go back and finish my leaving cert. And fair play to Liam Murphy. You know, I know it was a plan between him and my mother to get yeah. me back into football at the time. Liam was the Cork manager at the time. Yeah. But um, Liam offered me a spot in Colossus Stefan Nefer, so I went out and finished my education. I got a terrific leaving cert. I have to admit that the teachers out there were. And I have to put over, you know, I know you're a wrestling man yourself, yeah, yeah. but with John Barry, John Barry, the maths teacher over there, he's fantastic. John was a, he was a nutcase, but he's a terrific teacher. Yeah. And, um, and that's the reason I came home. I came home really to, to kind of smart myself back up and yeah. get back into, just, just because every, if, you're, if you're speaking only about football yeah. every day and you're trying to develop yourself even as a person, you know, we all read whatever progress is, you know, that's happen, progress is happiness. And but when you're stagnated and all you're talking about every day is football, it gets kind of boring. You know, as much as as much as you think it's going to be great, it's, it's heavily boring. Yeah. So uh, I came home, did the education, and then we were out. The thing with Cork was I never, I don't think I was ever at the fitness level to to make a, a big impression at Cork. Yeah. It was only when I went to Cove on loan down to Dave Hill yeah. that Dave really pushed. And Dave, so even me and Dave are still very good friends, you know, today and. and, and one of the true great coaches, in my opinion, in Irish football. And, uh, hopefully, he get back in fairly yeah. quick, you know, at, at a good level. But um, Dave pushed, and he saw what was there, and, and, and we had a great year and a half at Cove. Yeah. And but that spell, uh, that was pushed through not having a great time at Cork. I remember a funny story, I and mean, people people keep on talking about this with with Pat Dolan was the manager, and Pat took over, and he brought us down to the Rogerstown Park Hotel, and he said, right, he said, well, why haven't you played as much? And my answer was going to be. Well, I haven't had a chance because Stephen Napier and Gareth Cronin have been doing so well. And I said, well, to be fair, Pat, I said, I haven't had a chance. He cut me right in the middle. And he went, that's the problem, he said, with you. He says, you're back from England and you think everybody needs to give you this and give... And I'm kind of sitting there going, if you would just let me finish, <laughs> you would have been a lot better answer. <laughs> but, um, but look, what's far you won't go past just So the cold Ramblers thing then brought me to America back into school and, and coaching. Yeah. And that brought me to Iceland and, and you know, yeah, the rest is history. But there was a lot of you had injuries and stuff like you know I mean during yeah. the, um, the credit and all that but like you know it, it just, you hear players get injuries and you know sometimes it's hard to get the full recovery you need you know but you know from anyone I spoke to and anyone that I knew and even from my own knowledge of being a big football fan mm -hmm. um, do you know what I mean do you reckon they 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 could prevent you from kind of progressing a bit more from Cork no in general like even with England in general oh the injuries yeah. um, not really you see like. I'm, I'm a fully qualified strength and conditioning coach now, yeah. as you know, I was out in India with the Liverpool International Academy. Yeah. Um, injuries, players can look after, or if it's an impact injury where you get a smack off somebody, breaks your leg or twists your ankle, that's, that's bad, but you, yeah. realistically, if you look after your body well enough, if you eat the right foods, if you sleep well, if you rest well, you can look after your own injuries, and I didn't. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I, I, I was naturally fit, I was naturally strong, I was very quick, you know, yeah. I, I ran um, B Internationals for Ireland, and, Long jump champion and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I was a naturally fit kid, but uh, no, I I, uh, I take full responsibility for it myself. Had I had I been eating 
like a Gary McAllister, right? Yeah. I've been eating like a Richard Shaw or a Dion Dublin or something, or a Gordon Strachan. Yeah. The way they wanted us to, maybe, maybe it would have been different. But no, it's um, the the good thing with football is it, it, it kind of weeds you out. If you if you try and lie to people and you say, oh, well, it was his fault, or my his, yeah, it's yeah. your fault. Yeah. You know, get your finger up. It's your fault. I understand. Yeah. Really, I understand. Really. Do you enjoy the coach? And obviously, like, you've got big, big plans. Uh, we won't talk too much because we know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you're wanted all over the world, but you're obviously enjoying it. It must give you great pleasure. I love it. It's, uh, you know, it's, I know it's a bit philosophical, but I remember reading a quote from Mother Teresa saying, a life that's not lived for others is, not, is, is a life not lived. And coaching is that when you look at young players, especially, and you look at athletes and you look at, uh, you know, people that need, you know, everybody's, if you, if you look at the fattest person, the most overweight person, the most depressed person, yeah. they all know the answer on how to get better. Mm-hmm. Players know the answer on how to win football games. They know the answer on they shouldn't do this, they shouldn't dribble in the edge of the box, they shouldn't do yeah. it. just takes a fella just to kind of put the, the seeds in place to kind of get them, you know, and do yeah. it in a respectful and a motivational way. Yeah. And that's it. And when you see um, when you see a player doing something that you've done in a training ground in a positive way and it has a positive impact on and they're making a living and stuff like that out of football, it's like, God, there's no, there's no better feeling than that. And that's the reason I've been coaching. Yeah. And even from 13, 14 years of age, being a young fella, um, I always saw myself as a coach. I always saw myself coaching. Yeah. So I think football itself was a kind of a, a, a way to kind of get my name out there to become a coach. So, you know. The future is yours. The future is mine. Yeah. And uh, I know you're, we just mentioned before we go, like you're, uh, you like to play the guitar, you're a good yeah. singer. Uh, is that just a. It's oh, just, it's can just. We, can we see that album in a couple of years, maybe? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> the, uh, the thing is, it's, it's, it's especially you now, uh, as I said, you know, I'm just back from India. Yeah. We're kind of at a loose end with the way the club is going, so we don't know what's happening for the next couple of years. So, uh, I, when I ran Fitness for Regular People, FRP, out of the community centre here for the last couple of years when I was home, yeah. the t shirt I had was, I'd rather be busy than bored. So, I'd much rather get out and, and sing and, and, and do something at night. Than just to sit down <laughs> and dance. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to try and get that footage. I didn't think. I didn't think. Well, it's it's out there somewhere. It, it is out there. Yeah. It's on my phone. <laughs> no, it's out there somewhere. And um, no, the, the, it's just I'd rather do something. I hate sitting about the place doing nothing. I don't like. Yeah. You know, watching car. I could think of nothing worse than being sitting in front of the box watching Coronation Street or EastEnders and just you know. Yeah. Oh, and I know there's millions of people love them. But it's just not for me. No, I don't, I'm not a big soul popper. A minute's an opportunity, as everyone says. Like, every minute's an opportunity, so you have to do something. You have to do something. And it's, uh, I'm lucky, if, and you made a great point earlier. Since I was 13 years of age, 12, 13 years of age, I've always seemed to have been doing things that I love. I love education, I love football, yeah. uh, I love coaching, I love music, I love fitness. I have a yeah. fierce passion for making sure people are healthy and fit. Um, and it's, I've been lucky. Again, with hard work, you know. The, of course, you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, and then the old saying, you know, emotion comes from motion. So if you get off your ass and you start working, if you get off your ass and start doing something, you feel better about yourself. Definitely. And it's and you know, I'd rather feel good than really feel like crap. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the best way. And just before we go, John, uh, Aaron wanted to know who's the best. They got like you've had a great football mm-hmm. career. Who's the best you play with and the best you played against? If you could pick one. Best I've played with. There's a lot of good players. Especially like the underage days, even you know. Uh, Duffer was Duffer was up there. Duffer, <laughs> Damien Duff was up there. He was he was special. I remember he missed the first game against Slovakia that I made my debut. Duffer didn't play, and then the small little tiny kid came in to play against Austria a couple of a couple of maybe two months later. Yeah. My God, I'm waiting. We could see straight away, you know. And you know what the no brainers. Yeah. You know the ones you go. He's all right. Yeah, he's yeah. fine. Um, I'd have to say the best I ever played with. Um, has to be striking. He was ridiculous, ridiculous. And I remember in the first that first training game we spoke about earlier. Yeah. I was marking. We jump. We just signed John Salako, and the ball comes up. He jumps about four feet in the air, flicks it behind his leg, goes in. Salako dribbles it and smashes one to the top in. Now we were the U team players, yeah. 15, 16 years of age. Yeah. And I went, yeah, lucky. He said that's right. <laughs> he said the hard right work, the lucky right again. Stuck right in my head, and I went, thanks, Gaffer. Um, the best I played against. There's been some good ones that you know in friendly matches and stuff like that. I I, I let his jersey down at home when we played him in the Cold World well. Cup. He was terrific. Um and a gentleman. Yeah. I'd have to say, you know what, I'm a Cork man. We played in the friendly against Manchester United out in Turner's Cross for Cole Ramblers, I'd have to say it was right. 
He was he was doing we do things in two touches and three touches, yeah. and he was doing it in one touch. It was he, you know, it was just simple for him. And, you know, another one that you looked at and you went, you know, yeah, you can't. Yeah, he has it. And uh, I tell you, uh, another one great to go to, uh, to go back into management. He's going to be he's going to be terrific. Yeah, he's doing, he's taking the right steps with Aaron, I think so. Well, he's got the best mentor, I think, in anywhere Martin O'Neill has been, he's been successful. Yeah. And uh, I think Roy has all the tools. Uh, you know, I've, I've been lucky, I've been in management and in coaching for about 14 years now. Yeah. Iceland, America, India, Ireland, and at different levels. So you, you're able to deal with different players in different different situations. And uh, I think Roy, did, did the best thing he did as regards management was was come back with Martin. And Martin O'Neill is, you know, he's one of the most respected managers on the planet. Yes. I, I, I have nothing but, but great things to say about him. Uh, I think Roy Keane will be. So I think he'll be top notch as well. And as I said, to answer your question, he was, I think, his head and shoulders above anyone I played, I played against. Definitely. John, honourable man, thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks very much.